Welcome to Shook Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture of literature. I'm Adrian Fort, and we're here for another short story discussion. If I got this up here right, is this too cockeyed? What are we doing here? I think we're all right. Uh, today's short story discussion comes to us. It's one of my favorite short stories. It's a very short, short story. I imagine it's probably technically a flash fiction, but it is dense, so it might not be. It's probably around the 1100 word mark, as opposed to the 1000 word mark, or less, which is what qualifies a story as flash fiction. Every time I read this short story, I realize how much I like it. I forget, because it's so short, I move away from it and I read other stuff. But then a hankering starts inside me. And I have to read this short story. It takes me back to just why. So what I'm going to do is read the first five paragraphs and then the ending of the, the short story. Uh, and then we will have a discussion from that point. The school. Well, we had all these children out planting trees, see, because we figured that that, that was part of their education to see how the root systems... Uh, and also the sense of responsibility, taking care of things, being individually responsible. You know what I mean. And the trees all died. They were orange trees. I don't know why they died. They just died. Something wrong with the soil, possibly, or maybe the stuff we got from the nursery wasn't the best. We complained about it. So we've got 30 kids there. Each kid had his or her own little tree to plant. And we've got these 30 dead trees. All these kids looking at these little brown sticks. It was depressing. It wouldn't have been so bad, except that a couple of weeks before the thing with the trees, the snakes all died. But I think that the snakes, well, the reason that the snakes kicked off was that, you remember, the boiler was shut off for four days because of the strike. And that was explicable. It was something you could explain to the kids because of the strike, I mean. None of the parents would let them cross the picket line, and they knew there was a strike going on and what it meant. So when things started up again, we found the snakes. They weren't too disturbed. With the herb garden, it was probably a case of overwatering, and at least now they know not to overwater. The children were very conscious, conscientious with the herb gardens, and some of them probably you know, slip them a little extra water when we weren't looking. Or maybe, well, I don't like to think about sabotage, although it did occur to us. I mean, it was something that crossed our minds. We were thinking that way probably because before the gerbils had died and the white mice had died and the salamander, well, now they know not to carry them around in plastic bags. Of course, we expected the tropical fish to die, that was no surprise. Those numbers, you look at them crooked and their belly up on the surface. But the lesson plan called for tropical fish input and at that point there was nothing we could do. It happens every year. You just have to hurry past it. We weren't even supposed to have a puppy. And it goes into the puppy dying. And then there's a foreign exchange student. The foreign exchange student dies. And then a couple of kids from the class die. And, well, there's a lot of parents that died during that semester, and it just seemed kind of weird. But there is always the exorbitant amount of uh, grandparents that die. Uh, and that's just because, you know, they're grandparents. And this is the end of the story. One day, we had a discussion in class. They asked me, where did they go? The trees, the salamander, the tropical fish, Edgar, the papas and mamas, Matthew and Tony. Where did they go? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. And they said, who knows? And I said, nobody knows. And they said, is death that which gives meaning to life? And I said, no, life is that which gives meaning to life. Then they said, but isn't death considered such a fundamental datum, the means by which the taken for granted mundanity of every day may be transcended in the direction of, I said, yes, maybe. They said, we don't like it. I said, that's sound. They said, it's a bloody shame. I said, it is. They said, 
Will you make love now with Helen, our teacher's assistant, so that we can see how it is done? We know you like Helen. I do like Helen, but I said that I would not. We've heard so much about it, they said, but we've never seen it. I said I would be fired and that it was never or almost never done as a demonstration. Helen looked out of the window. They said, please, please make love with Helen. We require an assertion of value. We are frightened. I said that they shouldn't be frightened, although I am often frightened, and that there was value everywhere. Helen came and embraced me. I kissed her a few times on the brow. We held each other. The children were excited. The, then there was a knock on the door. I opened the door, and the new gerbil walked in. The children cheered wildly. I think that in the wake of a story like The School, with a lot of the symbolism that is employed, uh, trees and snakes and schools, and um, the dog is named the same thing as Edgar, um, dog backwards is God, maybe the teacher here is God, you know, uh, all of these things. We're looking at religion and uh, religiosity, tradition and ceremony. I think that's a natural way to sort of start a discussion about the short story. But in light of the way things seem to be going in the world, um, I think I'd rather talk about leadership, or lack thereof. How often have you looked at, how often have you looked at the government, or the media, or just your goddamn boss and thought I really don't I really don't think this person's in control I don't think they've got a firm grip on the steering wheel they're supposed to the government is supposed to your boss is supposed to know what's happening the media is supposed to steer things in a sort of conscientious direction And when you see, I think, that there's no clear, promising direction to things, the government, the media, your job, it's easy to blame it on malevolence. It's easy to say that prick in the White House, well, that prick is out for his own good. It's easy to say those pricks over at the news organization. They're trying to force feed this stuff to us. It's easy to say my boss, my boss just doesn't like me. But perhaps, perhaps more frighteningly, is the possibility uh, presented here. The government, the media, your boss, your goddamn parents, None of them have any idea what is going on. Um, Edgar, in this story, the teacher, he's just trying to do right. He's not trying to get over on anybody. He's not malevolent. He's clueless. And because he's clueless, things keep dying. The children in the story are looking for leadership, looking for guidance, looking for lessons on what to do next. But all he is capable of rendering is death. There is... Look, I think that anything worth knowing in life was probably said first by Chris Cornell. Nails in my hand from my creator you gave me life now show me how to live there is almost definitely an ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny type of mechanism somewhere in the back of our brain somewhere deep in our soul um, there is a 
search for guidance, I think, inherent to the human condition. Uh, this is why master and apprentice sort of relationships um, work so well when they work. This is why hierarchies form seemingly naturally. Uh, I'm not trying to get into some type of Jordan Peterson um, conversation, but if you set a group of kids to a task, leadership is going to form. So those kids want to get that thing done. Think about all of the group projects that you had to weasel your way through while you were in school. Someone took responsibility, someone got stuff done, and someone, and here's, here's the thing, here's the thing, in that group, there's always one or two people who say, okay, well, fuck it, you do it, it's yours, go ahead. If you really pay attention to things, and you really pay attention to the people who said, okay, fine, take the reins. Those people knew their place. Those people were doing the right thing. Because had they been in charge of anything, had they taken initiative, probably they would have screwed something up. And if you were one of those people, you know you would have screwed something up. And hopefully, you've taken the reins of your own life now. But you've taken control of your own stuff. Taking the reins of your own life sounds sort of weird um, but those hierarchies occurring naturally also occur other places besides group projects they occur in life they occur so if we are looking at this story simply as metaphor and we're not taking the religiosity route those children need not be children. Edgar need not be the only adult. He only need be in a place of leadership. These children here at the end Where is it here? Where do they go? And I said, I don't know. And they said, who knows? And I said, nobody. And they said, is death that which gives meaning to life? And I said, no, 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 no. Life is that which gives meaning to death. And they said, but death considered such, but, but isn't death considered such a fundamental datum that by the means by which taken for granted mundanity of every day may be transcended the direction of, I said, yes, maybe. They said, we don't like it. The passive party does not have the right to veto. I like that. The passive party does not have the right of veto. We don't like it. Well, tough to hit. You're in the students' chairs. Tough to hit. And I think that is something which, uh, personally, on a personal level, I am starting to... I have been, for nearly my entire adult life, what is known as black-pilled. I, I, don't, I don't care about your politics. Don't care. Get away, you know? Get away with all that stuff. All that hoopla. But so many people have made politics all of their life. Their entire life revolving around politics. As opposed to, say, freedom. That the politics don't let you escape. The politics put you on the front of the vehicle. They strap you up there. And you better move your feet or you get run over. You know? Um, I didn't expect for this to go this direction. I really didn't. Uh, but that is all that I have for this. A short story discussion for... Did I even introduce Donald Bartholomew? I don't think I did. Donald Bartholomew's short story, The School. There is a review for this short story here on the channel. 
uh, you might want to check that out as well if this is something that interests you. And definitely uh, check out this short story on your own if you have not done that to this point.